Hey, what's up guys? Welcome. This is Dr. Novell, and yes, the doctor is in. I will be reading uh, Umineko no Naku Koroni today, uh, the English title being Umineko When They Cry. I am playing with the PS3 graphics uh, installed. The... The version I'm playing specifically uh, is the Umineko Project variant, which tries to get the game to behave as close to the PS3 version as possible. For the longest time, I did not use that one because Umineko Project uh, did their own take on the translation, and I wasn't really a fan of some of the changes that they'd made to the... Uh, what is the... phrasing of certain things. Not that the, anything was inherently incorrect, I just didn't like the stylistic choices. There we go, stylistic choices, thank you. Ah, okay. But, thankfully, uh, they have a patch now where you can still include... where you can include the official translation as opposed to the altered translation. Still not quite perfect because there are some things, like pictures in the game, that have were specifically modified for the... Umineko Project translation versus the Witch Hunt translation. So I had to go in and manually <laughs> fix as much of that as I could. I don't know that I got everything, but we're going to try and get through that as best as we can. So anyway, I have been yakking long enough. Let us begin. And Chalbin, welcome. Episode 1, Legend of the Golden Witch. Welcome to Rokunjima. The Golden Witch extends you her heartfelt greetings. Before anything else, please make yourself at home. There is nothing to think too deeply about. Just be silent and take in the events in their entirety as they unfold. That is all that is asked of you. The difficulty level is standard. Let us at least begin on the trotter road. Loud bell. Yeah, the... Let me, uh... Let me adjust the audio, because honestly, that's... It's sounding kind of loud to me, and I've already turned the audio down, so... Let me... Make it just a bit quieter here. There. That should do it. The story is obviously very fictional and fantastic in nature. Any resemblance to existing individuals, organizations, etc. is entirely coincidental. Mato. Oh, forgot one thing I wanted to do. Uh, let's see here next. Voice volume. I'm going to turn the voice volume down lower. It sounds like I'm going to have to turn down the background music just a smidge as well. Okay. because I'm going to be providing the reading, but I do want the original voices in the background. Again. So you still haven't overcome your love of alcohol. The old physician let out a sigh as he removed the stethoscope. Two out... I can use words. Hold on. I need to adjust my seat. That's part of my problem. There we are. Okay. Two elderly men could be seen in the dimly lit study, which was filled with dust and a sickly sweet stench. In the corner of this room, which was much larger than what most people would call a study, was an expensive-looking bed, a man undergoing a medical examination, and the physician conducting it. There was also what appeared to be a servant watching over the whole scene. The bottle is my friend. It's no less of a friend than you, and who stood by my side even longer than you have. Yeah, the voices are still a bit louder than I would like. Uh, let's go to config. Right, let's turn that down. Way down. Okay. As the man bearing his chest for the stethoscope rearranged his clothes, he spoke unapologetically. Kinzo-san, your body only appears to be well thanks to the effects of the medicine. 
However, if you continue to drink such strong spirits, the treatment will become meaningless. Trust my judgment. Refrain from drinking. I thank you, though only for the sentiment. My friend. Genji, another glass. Water it down slightly. That way Nanjo can save face. Are you quite sure? After eyeing both the master who demanded the alcohol and the family doctor who forbade it, Genji, the old butler, silently gave a slight nod and carried out his master's orders faithfully. How, how are the sound levels on your end, Xiaobin? Is the music loud? Good level? Too quiet? The family doctor, Nanjo, let out a deep sigh once again as he watched the butler busy himself alongside the liquor cabinet. There was a smell filling up the room. Voices are good if we can lower the music a tad. Alright, I will do that. Config again. Let's... Oh. Okay. How's that? Okay. Little kinks you have to deal with each time you start a new game on stream. This sweet, poisonous aroma felt as though it melted the heart, if not the soul itself. It was the smell of that venomous green drink that the man couldn't bear to part with. Nanjo. Nanjo. You are my close friend. We've known each other for quite a long time. Yeah, voices need, still need to be get lower. Sorry. Uh. Alright, there we go. That is as quiet as I can make the voices without turning them off entirely. I am deeply grateful for all that you have done to keep me alive this long. I have done nothing. After all, you never listened to my advice as your physician. <laughs> and you never listened when I warned you about a mistaken chess move you're about to make. Seems only fair, does it not? Master. Thank you. I wouldn't die if I ran out of your medicine, but I would if I ran out of this. Disregarding Nanjo, who had his face set in a resigned expression, Kinzo took the glass that Genji was holding out to him. Why the midweek Umi Neko stream? I'm glad you asked. Today is October 4th. Uh, October 4th is the day that this game takes place. And so, because this is a game that is very near and dear to my heart, this is... I, I thought it fitting to make the date I started be a significant one. <sighs> uh, let's see. Disregarding Nanjo, who had his face set in a resigned expression, Kinzo took the glass that Genji was holding out to him. Very few people would associate that venomous color with an alcoholic beverage. Nanjo, be honest with me. How much time do I have left? Well, now, how short must I make it to convince you to set the bottle aside? Nanjo once again let out a sigh of resignation. Then he finally spoke to Kinzo as the latter swirled his glass. You don't have long. What precisely do you mean by that? Let us illustrate it with this chess game here. You have fairly nearly achieved checkmate, but you have not yet quartered my king. Nanjo's gaze was directed at a side table with a massive chess set placed on top of it. Judging by the positioning of the pieces, the game seemed to be entering its final stage. Black's rook and bishop were cutting deeply into enemy lines. White's king had already been castled and cornered so that even an amateur could see that the match would reach its conclusion before too long. Every time Nanjo came to gave him every time Nanjo came to give a medical examination, both of them would make a few moves. Nanjo was hinting that Kinzo would most likely fall into his eternal sleep before this game could be concluded. These were less the words of a physician than they were the words of an old friend. Were you a normal patient, I would recommend that you write a will at this point. And what is a will, Nanjo? 
handwritten instructions to the vultures on how to devour and scatter my corpse? No, not at all. As the word suggests, it's a way for you to record your will for later generations. It's far more than just a means to divide up your inheritance. Oh. And apart from that division of the inheritance, what might I write of? You might write of your regrets, or matters you have left unfinished. Things you want to pass down to others, or merely matters you wish to communicate. Anything you want. Hmm. <laughs> Things I want to pass down to others or matters I wish to communicate? Ridiculous. I, Ushiromi Akinzo, have not one thing I want to tell or leave behind. I was born with nothing. I will die with nothing. There is nothing I wish to leave to my foolish children. Even if the end were to come today, even if it were to come right now, I would accept that fate of death without a trace of fear. Kinzo-san, I created everything. My fortune, my prestige, everything! Those were built up by me and they will be lost along with me. There is nothing I wish to leave behind. Oh, Mickey, thank you for joining. How are you doing? Nothing! After I'm gone, I care not if it all goes to waste. I desire no tomb, no coffin. Those were the terms of the contract I made with the witch. When I die, everything will be lost. That has been part of the promise since the beginning, and that's why nothing will be left behind. There is nothing I can leave behind. Whoa, Donut Damage, thank you so much for the raid. Guys, uh, check out Donut Damage's channel. <laughs> oh, fun fact, since this is uh, JoJo music that's playing, uh, the lead character in this is in fact played by uh, Jotaro's uh, Japanese voice actor. So, yeah, thank you for coming. And thank you for the follow Death Slayer 06. Appreciate it. Uh, how'd your stream go? Uh, don't damage. And let's see, I think... Oh, Squego! I got a Squego following us, too. Thank you. Stream was great, thank you. Okay, awesome. Alright, uh, yeah, I'm playing uh, Umineko right now. Uh, today is October 4th, which is the same day that this game takes place back in 1986. So, uh, it is a significant day for me to start this. And thank you, Paul, for all seasons for joining. Oh, great to see you here, man. And that creepy sound effect is, in fact, from this game. So, <laughs> uh, all right, let us continue, because I've I've got a hard stop at around eight fifteen. So I want to try and get through, but I will try and pay attention to chat as much as I can. And thank you for following Spooky Expoba. <clears throat> After reaching a furious crescendo, Kenzo suddenly slumped over. Uh, thank you for the Metal Gear alert. His expression was limp and feeble, as though an evil spirit had possessed him and left. I... don't have the Witch's Cackle as a sound effect, Mickey. No, I don't have that at all. That's a highlighted message. However, I do have one regret. I have nothing to leave behind, but there is one thing I cannot leave undone. Thank you for the honk. <laughs> you would do well to write it down. Of course, it would be best if you could finish it before your time comes. However, even if the worst happens, those who come after you will carry it to completion. You must leave behind your regrets so they can be resolved, even if you're unable to do so yourself. That is a highlighted message. That is the purpose of a will. Yeah, all this is my voice here. Except for the voices in the background, that's the original Japanese voice acting. When Nanjo tried to gently pant Kinzel's shoulder, the dying man flew into a sudden rage and batted away Nanjo's hand. It's useless! 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 It must be done while I still live. At the moment of my death, my soul will be devoured by the demons of the contract and wiped out of existence. For me, there will be no peace or another world after death. 
That is why everything must be completed before I go. That's why a will has no meaning for me. And even if I had a chance to write such a thing, if I did have such a chance, I'd want to see it. I want to see it one more time. I want to see Beatrice's smiling face one last time. Oh, Beatrice, why have you resisted me for so long? I'll return everything you have given me. I am prepared to lose everything. So please, please show me your smile just one more time. Beatrice, I beg of you, you must be able to hear my plea. That's the kind of woman you are. I beg of you, show yourself to me. You're here, aren't you? You're standing there, invisible, listening to every word I say. And even now you're mocking me from somewhere in this room, aren't you? Please appear before me one more time and smile. Feel free to scold me, even snatch away my life by your own hands if you so desire. I don't want to die alone like this. I cannot let myself die until I've seen your smile just one more time. Ah, Beatrice! Beatrice! I offer up this life of mine. I offer it up to you. I'm begging you. Beatrice! Gonna hydrate after that. <clears throat> Thank you guys. <clears throat> Thankfully, that's the last I'm gonna have to do for that for a little while. Uh. <sighs> The other voices should be a little bit easier, but good to start out on a high note. I do love that opening theme. Okay. Now for a little bit more relaxation of the throat, because the next scene's a little bit more chill. The first day, October 4th, 1986. Oh, my feline companion has decided to join me. Oh, thanks sure move with the times. Can't believe we'll be able to make the trip in just 20 minutes. Couldn't help but scratch my head and marvel at how far things have come in recent years. We used to go by boat. Back then we were all forced to endure nearly half a day of swaying back and forth over the sea before we reached Nijima. Things have gotten so much more convenient these days. Still, I've never been on a plane this small. I've flown in a huge jumbo jet before, but this will be my first experience in such a tiny one. Oh, thank you, Mickey. That's uh, kind of on the fly, trying to go as close to the Japanese voice as I can is to my ability, so appreciate that. It's going to shake, isn't it? Uh, they say smaller boats shake more than big ones, so I guess the same rule probably applies to planes. Uh, just spare me. <laughs> Don't worry, Battle Kun. It shakes much less than that boat did. <laughs> is that you, George Aniki? Uh, Aniki, that is a more rough and tumble way of uh, referring to one's brother or brother figure. In this case, uh, George is Battler's cousin. <laughs> well, you see, that is funny thing. You should also have a high pitched voice, but. Uh... <laughs> we'll save that for when I actually need to do it. 
<laughs> Don't scare me like that. You just shaved three years off my life. Anyway, what's shaking got to do with anything? <laughs> you don't think I'm actually scared of the plane shaking, or maybe falling out of the sky or something, right? Oh, of course not, my mistake. I see you've changed a lot since we last saw you. After all, it's been six years since then. You're not a kid anymore. <laughs> hmm. Sheesh. And here you are old enough to smoke and drink. Got no interest in smoking, but I've always wanted to try some booze. <laughs> Uh, I am wanting to get into the voice acting field. I started this channel largely as a way to help kind of practice the voice acting, so thank you. Well, if you got your dad's jeans, I bet you can hold your own when it comes to drinking, right? right thank you guys. Thank you, Booty Madness, for joining, and you have a great night. Well, I usually bring, drink for business rather than pleasure. It's pretty hard to do business in Japan without it. <laughs> that's exactly right. Uh, that's why I never miss a chance to get in some practice. Th th that's no good, Battle Coon. You're still a minor. Uh, don't you know alcohol can stunt the growth of... Uh, never mind. Come on, I'm tall enough already. In fact, it'd be easier to find clothes if I shrunk a little. I puffed my chest out proudly. <clears throat> Until I hit my growth spurt, my height was below average in my class. But then I grew and grew, and before I knew it, I'd pass 180 centimeters. That's uh, 5 foot 11 inches for you folks overseas. Um, incidentally, the reader is actually taller than I am. <laughs> I guess all that muscle training and those shady mail order performance enhancing drugs to thank for that. All right, have a good night, Death Slayer. Appreciate you popping in. Before then, I never dreamed that I'd shoot 10 centimeters above George Aniki, who'd reached his peak height early on. Damn, I bet my relatives all say, Look how big you've grown, Battler John, or something. That's all so embarrassing. I wish they'd just give me a break. Anyway, my name, Battler. Well, it's pretty damn weird, don't you think? I gotta wonder what my parents were thinking when they named me that. I've never met anyone who could read it right the first time. I usually get called Sentokun. Uh, Sentokun, according to the tips. Let's see. Go to the grimoire here. Uh, words for. Yeah. In addition to its own symbols, Japanese makes the use of Chinese characters, which it calls kanji. Each kanji has, tends to have a range of meanings associated with it, and kanji are put together to make words. Many kanji can be pronounced or read in several different ways, and usually only one reading will be correct for any particular word. For instance, and for instance, Tokyo has the kanji for east and capital. So, Tokyo, east capital. But it can also be read, uh, that first character can also be read higashi, but higashi kyo will not be understood. The word must be read with the Tokyo reading. Sometimes, however, the kanji readings have to be ignored, and the word has to be pronounced in a re unique way of its own. For example, battler name is spelled like this. The first character means fight, and its readings are sen, ikusa, and... Um, hold on. Tataka. The second character means person, and it readings, its readings are jin, nin, hito, ri, and to. Anyone encountering the unique name spelled like this would probably try to read it as something like Sento. No one would guess that he is called Battler. Not only is the reading of his name impossible to guess, but it's also an English word and doesn't sound remotely like a Japanese name. Or an English name, for that matter. Because his name literally means fighting person. Anyway. Sorry, but that's not even close. My name is written uh, like that. Can you read it? The first part is my family name, Ushiromiya. That's a fairly plausible Japanese pronunciation so far. The problem is my given name. Those kanji right there are made up for the characters for fight and person, and it's pronounced battler. Put it all together and you've got Ushiromi a battler. Pretty crazy, right? It's crazy enough that my parents decided to call me that, but it's even more crazy that some government worker let them make it official. Both groups are at the top of my must-kill list. And thank you for the honk. 
Anyway, this is one of my cousins. <clears throat> His name is spelled like this, and it's pronounced Ushiromia George. Uh, he's five years older than me, so he must be turning 23 this year? <laughs> Since the Ushiromiya cousins consist of two boys and two girls, I ended up playing with George all the time. And because I've always thought of him as a big brother, I still call him Aniki today. <laughs> Whoa, Battlekun, look how big you've gotten. You know what they say, leave a boy for three days and you'll hardly recognize him. Yeah, it must be in his blood. Rudolph wasn't that tall either until his high school years. Perhaps people end up taller if their growth spurt comes late. <laughs> nah, it's nothing special. A real man needs to be tough on the inside, too. Exactly! Battle of Kun knows here how it works. Real men win or lose based on what they've got on the inside. Can't ever forget to keep up your training and discipline. You gotta do that. Wait very alertly for the perfect moment and then strike. Now, I never imagined that I'd become the company president I am today, master of my own domain. <laughs> to think I've come this far after starting out penniless and ruined. This stout, plump old guy is George Aniki's dad, Uncle Hideyoshi. He's the husband of Dad's older sister. In other words, we're not blood-related. He's nice to children, sociable all the time, even quick to give out some quick spending money to us kids. Simply put, he's an awesome uncle. He speaks in a very odd and noticeable Kansai dialect, uh, which is typically translated in dubs as a southern or Texan accent, which is what I'm going for here. Um... But he's actually a natural-born Kanto man. Apparently, impressions are everything in the business world. So speaking in a different style than other people is an act that makes him stick out more. However, here he gets embarrassed with it when talking with an earshot of a real Kansai person, so he switches back to standard Japanese. I don't really get it, but he's definitely an interesting person. If only you weren't so quick to brag about your life story. That's enough for now, I think. I'm sure Battler's getting tired of it. Aren't you? <laughs> nope, not at all. <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with that. I think it's pretty cool for a man to have some stories he can brag about. I don't have anything like that at all. Oh, really? I'd imagine a man with your looks would leave girls crying left and right. I can't believe you have nothing at all to brag about. <coughs> Excuse me. No, 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 you're joking, right? <laughs> Uh, of course, nothing weird like that has ever happened to me. In fact, if you know anyone, I'm all ears. Come on, you aren't fooling anyone. <laughs> you must tell your aunt all about it later. After all, nothing of the short sort ever happens to George. Sorry, my cat is trying to. Ah, uh, yes, uh, the legend pacing, Legend of the Golden Witch is kind of a slow burn, but it picks up. I don't know that we'll have enough time for it to pick up tonight, but we'll see. <clears throat> Come on, you aren't fooling anyone. <laughs> you must tell your aunt all about it later. After all, nothing of the sort ever happens to George. <laughs> this is George Anakin's mother, Aunt Ava. She's my dad's older sister. She and Uncle Hideyoshi are a pair of jokers, and they've always teased me back as far back, back as far as I can remember. Uh, this sometimes made them a bit hard to get along with when I was small. Uh, well, I guess the events of the last 30 seconds prove that they can still be hard to get along with. Even so, George Aniki's family is interesting and fun, and they seem to get along just fine. Well, thank you so much for popping in, and thank you again for the raid donut damage. You have a great evening. Talk to you later. Sheesh, that's pretty much the total opposite of my family. Batalakun? Have you seen Rudolph's son? Huh? He headed off to the bathroom a while ago. Is he not back yet? <laughs> Maybe the old geezer dropped dead. Nama 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 no num. That's no way to talk about your own father. Still, this isn't the first time he's taken so long in the bathroom. Yeah, the guy's always been that way. Does he really have to take a magazine with him every time he needs to take a dump? And what on earth is he doing in there with those particular magazines? <laughs> oh, you don't need to worry about that at all. Since we've been together, I haven't let him do that on his own. <laughs> oh, I'll have to get the juicy details later. 
Sounds like Dad's got his balls in his iron grip. You know exactly what would happen with that man if I didn't keep a tight grip, don't you? No kidding. You're the only one capable of reining in that old bastard. As his son, I am more than happy to let you take over. Yes, leave it all to me. After all, that's my specialty. This woman is my father's wife. Her name is Ushiromiya Kirie. As you can probably tell from our conversation, she's not my real mother. She's basically my stepmother. My real mom died six years ago. Kirie-san is the woman Mitt Dad married afterwards. It's understandable for someone my age. I could never bring myself to call his new wife mom. And I doubt she feels like using the word son on this massive kid who's no relation to her at all. We aren't little kids. We know there's nothing to be gained by fighting. So we decided we wouldn't force ourselves to pretend that we're family. I decided to act a bit more frank with her, acting as though she's a friendly neighbor instead. It's much easier if we just keep a little distance instead of forcing ourselves to act all close and making each other uncomfortable. Kyrie-san has always been pretty open about this, and thanks to that we've been able to get along pretty well. And just when we were bad-mouthing Dad about being in the bathroom, the man himself came back wiping his hands with a handkerchief. Hmm? Battler. Hey, what's up, Dad? Don't pinch my ear! Ah! So, you've been talking trash about me with Mom again, haven't you? What makes it so hard to show a little respect for your father, hmm? Damn it, that hurts! Yeah, I can stretch my ear all you want, but I'm not gonna be able to fly! That hurts! Come on now. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. Now say, Father, please forgive me for being so rude. Like hell I will! Go find yourself some members-only store if you want it that much! Gotta let go! Ah, this old bastard is my dad. I think I'm pretty tall myself, but Dad's just about as tall as I am. It's no surprise Aunt Eva started talking about Dad's blood when she saw my height. And by the way, my height isn't the only thing I got from him. It seems having weird names runs in the family. Dad's full name is written like this. You can't read it, can you? Yes, it was the Konami code. <laughs> Come on, it's just this. Anyway, this guy's name is pronounced Rudolph. <laughs> you must hate Grandfather for giving him that name. Still, there's no reason to pass that weird naming tradition on to me. Thank you for the lurk, Wild Talon. Appreciate it. As the old bastard twisted my ear all over the place, Aunt Ava snuck, by, snuck up behind him and grabbed his ear. Hey, Rudolph. You should know better than to physically abuse your son. Yeah, that hurts, Anarchy! The scene perfectly illustrated the relationship between the prankster younger brother and the older sister who could deal out punishment to him despite his size. I think that's good enough for now, Evanesan. I'll make sure to stretch out his other ear later on. Oh, my apologies. I must leave some pulling for you to do, Kirie-san. Rudolph? Make sure Kirie-san gives you lots and lots of punishment later on, okay? You're one to talk, Anaki, abusing your little brother like that. <laughs> Hideyoshi Nisan, I'd like to thank you very much for picking her up. If you hadn't been so generous, she'd still be unsold in the store. You have my gratitude and apologies. What? Who are you calling unsold? After taking two or three steps back, Aunt Ava unleashed one of her beautiful high reverse roundhouse kicks, which stopped just a centimeter away from the tip of Dad's nose. After starting out with Tai Chi Chuan for her figure, and I probably butchered that pronunciation, I, Aunt Ava then developed an interest in the Chinese martial arts. After that, she went through karate, taekwondo, kapira, is that how you pronounce that? And what is it she's learning now again? Well, anyway, they say a woman's weapons are her in her lower body, and that's literally true for Ava. Rudolph? Did you know that a single direct blow to the side of the head like that would knock you unconscious? Not so long ago, I accidentally connected in a practice match, and my opponent was out cold. Sheesh, what a pain. I'm so sorry she can't help walking like a freak. Dad, completely unfazed, shrugged and smiled ironically at Uncle Hideyoshi. 
<laughs> Never had a brother or sister myself. So when I see you two bickering with each other, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Sure is nice to have a big family. Oh, then why not consider making a little brother for George-kun? He's already a fine adult who's about to go off on his own, so it might be a good time to have another child. Hey, have a little sympathy for the new kid and all the pain and suffering he'd have to live through. I'm surprised even George-kun turned out as well as he did after being born from this sinister sister of mine. And what an awesome kid he is. Please share some of that with our blockhead of a son someday, will you? That's not at all how it happened. It's thanks to Ava Nason's proper rearing that George Kuhn became the kind, gentle kid he is now. Isn't that right, Nason? Nason means sister, for those of you who are not aware. Oh, come now. <laughs> you think so? Our George still has a long way to go. Oh, by the way, how's your little Anja Chan doing? I heard she was vomiting. Oh, that's right. Now I was hoping to finally see her face after such a long time. Is she okay? She often catches a cold when the seasons change. She's very frail. I did want to bring her along, but we decided to have my family look after her this time. I think that's a wise move. She'll heal a lot better if she stays away from that venomous head family household. A child's health is always more important than an adult's convenience, don't you think? I know some great medicine for vomiting colds like that. When we get back home, I'll send some to you right away, so please, let her try some. Uh, thank you very much, Hideyoshi Nissan. I'm always in your debt. And once the conversation suddenly veered off in that direction, we kids didn't have any chance of butting in. For now, I'm just happy Aunt Ava gave Dad his just desserts for talking on my ear. Are we still waiting for the weather report? George Anaki pointed at the counter. The checking weather sign was still stuck next to the departure times for the flight we were scheduled to board. Ah, uh, well, there, the, uh, there was supposed to be an English dub for this, but there, we haven't heard anything about it in years, basically. So, whether or not it'll ever come, we don't know yet. Of course, it might just be taking them that long to actually record all the dialogue. So who knows? And I don't imagine a certain unspecified virus of unknown origin has helped matters as far as that goes. Anyway. <sighs> According to Anarchy, some smaller planes are more subject to winds and other effects of the weather. And it's not an all not an all uncommon for flights to be delayed because of that. Wait a sec. We are totally sure it's not gonna shake, right? I'm down here on the ground just looks cloudy, not windy. Uh, well I guess it's different up where the planes fly. The weather's a bit uncertain today. Aunt David looked at a TV in the lounge. The weather forecast was being broadcast, informing us that a typhoon was approaching the Kanto region. A typhoon again. <laughs> Guess there's no helping it with the annual family conference being held in October. And for all of those of you in the chat who uh, have not joined my Discord, if you'd like to, the link is in the chat. I've also got my YouTube links in case you miss a stream, which could be very important if you want to continue on with this story. Because, yeah, you don't want to miss any of it. Um, and of course, Twitter is where I, yeah, I'm sorry, Mickey. Yeah, I, I checked too, and no updates on Twitter either. So, uh, speaking of Twitter, my, uh, Twitter profile link is also in the chat if you want to follow me there. And that is where you get the most up-to-date notifications on when I'm streaming. Where was I? A typhoon again? Because there's no helping with the annual family conference being held in October. Couldn't have you chosen a better season? I agree. I've always hoped we could have some time around the Oban Festival in mid August. In that case, why don't you suggest that to Father and Nissan during the conference? Very funny. Why don't you do it yourself? Our brother would never listen to anything I suggested. No way. It doesn't really bother me that much to have it in October. 
I was just saying you might want to propose it. Since you said you hate typhoons so much. I only said that typhoons always come around this time of year. You're the one who said you wanted to move it to the Yoban Festival, right? Well, you said it too last year. Didn't you say that it would be easier to fit in your schedule if we had it during the Yoban Festival? I never said anything like that. Oh, yes, you did. I certainly wouldn't forget something like that. No, I didn't. You're the one saying that all the time. Didn't you know? Stopping a kick just a hair's breadth away from impact is a very high-level technique. Sheesh. Women your age shouldn't spread their legs like that. Dad and Aunt Ava's argument looked no different from a couple of brats quarreling. Even though they usually behave like normal parents, they turn right back into kids again when they meet their siblings at these family conferences. You're the one who looks like a real adult, analyzing it all calmly. Hope I never turn her out like that old bastard. I'd much rather end up like as an intellectual adult like you, Anaki. Like me? <laughs> oh, I still have a long way to go. I still have very little experience out there in the real world, and I need to work on becoming more confident and sociable. I think you far surpassed me on all those counts, Battlekun. I'm sure you'll outstrip me fast enough when you become an adult. George Aniki scratched his head and laughed as though trying to hide his embarrassment. Of course, he was just being humble. Aniki entered a university and became an apprentice at Uncle Hideyoshi's company at the same time, studying both academics and how to become a business emperor in parallel. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, content warning. Uh, sorry. Um, I would have figured you would be wearing earbuds if you were watching at work. Huh. Then right after graduating, he got into Uncle Hideyoshi's company as his father's aide, piling up a lot of real-life experiences he devoted himself zealously to his work. His great dream is to one day stand on his own and build up his own kingdom. Anaki's a real paragon of a man, sparing no effort as he strived towards his goals. It's no exaggeration to say that I really respect him. And then there's me. I'm nothing at all like Anaki. I'm living my happy-go-lucky, idle high school life to the max. I've got no dreams for the future. I just like to sit back, stay cool, and let the money flow in. But of course, that could never happen. When Anaki was my age, he'd already formed an impressive objective and started devoting himself towards studying for that goal, so I guess I can't compare at all. My dad just says, Sure, you can study at my company if you like cleaning toilets. Damn it, I'm not going to be in the debt of that old bastard. Find my way myself. If only willpower was all it took to become an adult. Should I go on one of those self-searching journeys that are all the rage these days? Well, it's not like I could mooch off my parents for that kind of money. Oh! Right then, Uncle Hideyoshi shouted out loudly. He's a really nice person on the whole, but he does have a problem controlling the volume of his voice. When I looked over, I saw that he was greeting Aunt Rosa, who'd come late. Oh! If it ain't Rosa-san! Maria-chan, no long time no see! Long time no see! Uh, I don't know that I can do that. Uh, I will... I'm gonna have to try a few different ranges for her to see what works. Maria, shouldn't that be it's good to see you again? Greet your uncle properly. Oh, it's good to see you again. There, I think that'll work. There you go. Well said. How about some candy as a reward? Oh, huh? Where did I put it? Rosa-san, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you too, Maria-chan. Uh, it's been too long, Kirene-san, Hideyoshi-ni-san. And, oh my, Battler-kun? Good night, Chibi Taco. Look how big you've gotten. Oh, come on. <laughs> ah, it's embarrassing hearing that from every person I meet. Hey, Rosa. You're late. If the plane was on time, you'd barely have made it. I'm sorry. 
We had some trouble making our train connection. So, are we waiting on the weather again? Oh, don't complain. I much prefer the 30-minute plane trip to spending six hours bouncing about on a boat. I think I need to turn the music down just a little bit more, because it's kind of getting loud for me on my end. Okay. That should be okay, right there. Even if we're kept waiting here for an hour, it's still much faster overall. Maria-chan's gotten huge, too. So, how tall are you now? Ooh! So, how tall am I now? Maria-chan parroted Uncle Hideyoshi's question looking up at her mother. I guess she doesn't remember her own height. She's probably right in the middle of a growth spurt, so her height must change every month. Give it a few more years and she'll suddenly start looking feminine. Um, just how tall were you the last time you got measured? You keep getting bigger and bigger, don't you? Right? Ooh! I think she's grown a lot since last year. Let's see, she turned nine years old this year, didn't she? Nine years old! Ooh! That's right, you're nine years old now. Nice, glad to see you're doing well too, Maria-chan. Up you go! Mmm. Well, I guess you've gotten a bit too heavy to play airplane with. George, Anaki, what a rude thing to say to a lady. Here, I'll do it. Up you go. When I went to lift her up in Anaki's place, Maria stiffened defensively, staring suspiciously at my face. Ah, that's right. Last time I met Maria was six years ago, and she was only three years old. Of course she doesn't remember my face. Maria-chan, don't you remember? It's battle kun you used to play together, remember? Ooh. No surprise, I guess. The last time she met Battler, she was only three. You don't keep memories at that age. She must know everyone's face apart from mine because she meets them every year, but I haven't had contact with the Ushiromiya family for about six years now. So it's no surprise that this nine-year-old girl doesn't have any memories of me. Even I can only just barely remember her being a three-year-old crybaby. Maria, this is Battler Onichan, Rudolf Nissan's son. Understand? The brother's son is... The brother is the son... Uh... Ooh. That ooh sound is probably her brain going to overload at that complicated explanation. I guess the phrasing of that was a bit confusing. Ni, or Oni, the title you'd use to refer to an actual older brother, can also be a friendly honorific for a boy who's only a bit older than you. It's just like Ne, or One, the word for big sister. Maria-chan? This is Badalukun. He's your cousin, like me. Like George Oni-chan? Battler? Cousin? Ooh. Uh... That's right. You got it. This part of Anaki is what r makes me really look up to him. For someone who isn't married, he's just great at dealing with kids. I'm sure he'll be an indulgent father in the future. Battler Onichan. Maria looked straight at me with a questioning expression, as though asking whether it was okay to call me that. Yep, that's me, Battler. Nice to meet you, Maria. Ooh! Battler! Maria! You mustn't talk to him like that. Call him Battler Onichan. Uh, that's alright, Aunt Rosa. I don't sweat the small stuff. Hey, Maria! We're close enough that we don't need honorifics, right? Battler! 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 Ooh! ooh. That's right, Maria! 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 Ooh! ooh. <laughs> We horsed around for a while to make up for the six-year gap in our friendship. She probably still thinks of me as nothing more than a big new friend, but things will probably work out as we get to know each other again. But I'm surprised. She's just the way I remembered her being six years ago. It seems that people just don't change that much after all. I'm a bit happy that she's still the pure, innocent girl I remember. Uh, her name is written like this. Of course, uh, it's pronounced Maria. 
The third character looks like a cross, which is pretty cool. Her feelings don't usually show up on her face, so it can be difficult to know just what she's thinking, but that's just how she looks on the outside. On the inside, she's just a sweet, normal girl. Uh, then there's Maria's mother, Aunt Rosa. She's my dad's younger sister. Uh, it, Rosa's written like this. Here's a name that's totally not in Japanese. Sorry to say it, but her name's almost as ridiculous as dad's. Gotta respect her for not ending up as screwed up as he is. When I think about it, all the names in my family sound foreign. Just why is grandfather so obsessed with that? Because of him, even we grandchildren have to put up with this weird naming sense. It's even more annoying since grandfather's own name is perfectly normal! Anyway, there's one thing about Aunt Norosa that's a relief compared to the other family members. The old bastard Aunt Ava have this annoying urge to tease and mock people all the time. But even though she shares their blood, Aunt Rosa isn't like that at all. She has the most common sense among all the siblings. Like Uncle Hideyoshi, she's a kind aunt who will always be on the kid's side. However, possibly because she's more strict as a parent, she's not liberal with handing out spending money like Uncle Hideyoshi. Okay. Now we have the entire group of family members who are going to board the plane. At that moment, as though it had waited for us all to arrive, an announcement rang out through the lobby. Our apologies for the delay. Boarding will now commence for Flight 201 to Nijima. We ask that the passengers please form two lines in front of the counter behind the white line. Rosa, you still haven't gone through the boarding procedures, right? Hurry up. Oh no! Maria, come on! Ooh! <clears throat> We had to go through a metal detector before going out on the runway. Our small plane wasn't as massive as an international flight, but it was still a plane. A staff member holding a metal detector checked us all. Once all of us cleared the check, we followed the staff member out onto the runway. Come to think of it, everyone here is in the Yushiromiya family. It's like this is a reserved charter flight or something. Our group stopped in front of the entrance to the airplane. Then our guide turned around and spoke, looking down at the passenger list as he did. Boarding will now commence. As I call out the names on the passenger list, please take your seats in order, starting from the front row on the right side and going right to left, then on to the next row. I will now begin reading the passenger list. Ushiromiya Hideyoshi-sama? Oh, I'm first. Right here. Uh, by the way, do you have some candy, Ava? Yeah, I've been looking all over for some, but I can't find any. Ushiromiya, Eva-sama. They're in my handbag. I'll get one once we're inside the plane. I've heard that candies are a good way to protect your ears from hurting because of variations in atmospheric pressure when landing or taking off. That's probably what they're talking about. <laughs> Hope I get a window seat. <laughs> Don't worry. There aren't any other kinds of seats. As George Anaki said, there are apparently only two lines of seats. So this is what a small plane is like. We are totally sure it's not going to shake, right? Ushiromiya, George-sama? Ah, right here. But don't worry, Battler-kun. It won't shake too much. Ushiromiya, Battler-sama? Uh, Aniki, what, what do you mean, not too much? Hey, you can just swim if you fall from a boat. If a plane crashes, you're screwed, right? Oh, we got all... We all get our own parachutes in our seats, don't we? Wait, we don't? Ushiromiya, Rudolph-sama. Come on, battler, stop standing there slack, John, and get in. Ah, Dad! Don't push me! We don't get parachutes! <laughs> Ushiromiya, Kirei-sama. Okay, you two, stop fooling around. Let's move on in. Ah, oh, Kirie. Don't push me. This blockhead isn't moving. Ushiromiya, Maria-sama. Ooh! Let's move on in! Ushiromiya, Rosa-sama. Maria, be quiet. This is your pilot, Kawabata. We'd like to thank you for taking New Tokyo Aviation's Flight 201 today. We estimate that the flight to Nijime Airport will take about 20 minutes. We are receiving reports of atmospheric turbulence. There may be some shaking of the aircraft, so we ask that you do not unfasten your seatbelts after takeoff. Uh, Aniki, did, he, did I just say we need to wear seatbelts? 
In a jumbo jet, they let you undo them after takeoff, right? So it's going to shake so much we can't take them off. Damn it, you tricked me. It's going to shake after all. Where are the parachutes? I knew I should have taken the boats. Okay, now's a good time to hydrate. Battler the wuss. <laughs> and thank you, Wild Town. Appreciate it. Oh, um... Reeve, if you're listening, there is going to be a content warning in this upcoming chapter, so um, just be forewarned. Jessica? Like, Jessica. Like, I might shorten the eye just a little bit, but not so much that it's terribly noticeable. Noticeable. Have to go now to get ready for clothes. There hasn't been in the, anyone in the store for 30 minutes. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, Jeshka in Japanese. It's, yeah, uh, the one that I am trying to um, be accurate with is, of course, Beatrice or uh, Beatrice. Uh, that's because that's the Italian pronunciation of the name, which is what they tried to use in the Japanese yeah. version and kind of made a big meme out of it. But... Uh, I rather like what Catbox Creative's plan was for it, and that is uh, for all the people who respect Beatrice, they would pronounce her name Beatrice, because that's the correct pronunciation. And everybody else who doesn't know her or respect her, they would just say it Beatrice. So, that's what I'm going to be going for. Should have taken the boat. The boat. Fall! Fall! Ooh. Maria, that's enough. But what a surprise. I thought there was nothing that could scare Battler Kun. This guy can't handle vehicles for some reason. Always yells about falling and sinking and stuff. You're a disgrace of a man you are. Ah, shut up! That thing was seriously shaking way too much. I just got a little stressed since it was my first time in a small plane like that. You call that a little stressed? Sounds like it'd be fun to take an overseas vacation with you, Battler Kun. Would you like to go to Egypt with your aunt? You'd get to ride a plane for a full 14 hours. <laughs> There's a good plan. Battler Kun, you should go let even a son toughen you up some. Still, it's so hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, everyone's got their own strong and weak points. It's bad to laugh at them. <laughs> D Dad, you're laughing too. Uh, hey, Maria-chan, you shouldn't laugh anymore. Shouldn't laugh anymore? Ooh. God damn it. That's being scared of planes really such a big deal. Everyone obviously thinks I'm a big oaf now. We split up and took separate taxis from the airport to the harbor. From there on, we'd be taking a boat to the island. The islands are right next to each other, so the distance of the trip wasn't that great. By boat, it was a leisurely 30 minutes to the island. When we reached the pier, to the, where the boat to the island was anchored, we saw a figure waving at us. George and Isan! It's been so friggin' long! Ah, Jessica-chan, it's been a year since I last saw you. You've gotten taller again, haven't you? <laughs> Don't give me that. It's embarrassing when you say it every year. Hey, Anaki, you've got to be kidding me. Is that really Jessica? Wait a sec, George. Is this big guy... Battler? We both stared at each other. 
She definitely didn't look like that in my memories, but I do remember her crazy way of talking. I'm gonna pull up the tips here for an explanation. In Japanese, men and women traditionally, or perhaps stereotypically, speak differently, and this difference is much larger than what you'd find in English. Jessica's speech is masculine, blunt, casual, and assertive. In Japanese, this is quite evident in a majority of her lines, using assertive and traditionally male uh, particles like this. Um, uh, why am I drawing a blank here? Uh, like this kanji, there we go. And casual, slangy contractions. Uh, not to mention the language. Character, there we go. Yo, Jessica! What's this now? <laughs> ah, the music. Yeah, it is good. You're kidding me, you look like a woman now. What are these boobs? You even managed to get a chest! <laughs> let me rub them, let me! Don't screw around with me, I'm a plushing flower of 18. Of course my hair grew longer and I got these. What, you think I just got boobs just get fondled by you, loser? And speaking of you, sure, you got all ridiculously huge, but did you get a bit stronger too? Don't screw with me, I'll show you how much training I've done since back then. You're pissing me off. I'll beat you at your own game. Uh, this head scrum's girl's name is spelled like this. She was born on the same unlucky star as me, sharing the same kind of weird name. Anyway, uh, those kanji are pronounced Jessica. She's dad's older brother's daughter. That older brother happens to be the oldest son of the Ushiromiya family, so for now, it means Jessica is the direct family heir. Since Jessica and I are the same age and sometimes had little boy-girl squabbles with each other, we've always been used to fighting and joking around together whenever the relatives gather. Jessica grew more quickly, so she always had me beat in terms of size and physical strength. When we scuffled in a contest of strength, it usually went Jessica's way. So even though I realized I'd grown bigger, part of my mind was still convinced that I couldn't beat Jessica. <laughs> what? What the? What are you getting all serious for? Ow, 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 ow. Hey, this is nothing. Jessica, you've gotten weak. Sh shut up. I'm a girl, so of course I couldn't beat a guy with physical strength forever, right? Well, you've got a point there. The meat I put on my arms all went to your chest. Looks like it'd be a pretty even test of strength between my arms and your boobs, don't you think? Told you, my boobs aren't for you to feel up. Besides, how about you? Did your cute little elephant song get a bit bigger too to go with the rest of you? Stop it, idiot! No, you perv! I'll be ruined for marriage! Don't touch my crotch! Don't say stuff people are going to misinterpret. Honestly, I was so surprised at how feminine Jessica had become that I had to joke around like an idiot to hide it. Well, considering what a bossy brat she was six years ago, anyone would be surprised. And I guess she's just as surprised. She probably wasn't expecting to lose to me in a test of strength. After losing that easily, she must be shocked at how much I've grown in the past six years. Six years... Once again, I'm being shown just what a huge gap of time that was. Crap, total defeat. <laughs> it's like I'm no match for you anymore. But that's not true. Even Battler Kun must have his weaknesses. Right, Maria Chan? Ooh! Fall! Fall! <laughs> Cut it out, Maria! Let's keep that a secret, okay? Fall? What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, but there's no chance you'll see that weakness of mine now. After all, the nightmare plane trip is already over and done with. Only thing left is the nice, quiet splashing of the boat ride. I never thought I'd start loving that piece of junk about this much. <laughs> huh? George and Isan, is there something wrong with his head? You'll understand soon. Very soon. At the time, I didn't get what Anarchy meant by that big smile. What have we here? Oh? battler son, how big you've grown! Hmm. Who's it this time? It's an old lady with an apron. Oh, yeah, that takes me back. I, I remember now. You remember her, right? It's Kumasawa-san, the servant. I could never forget you, Kumasawa-bachan! 
Bachan means granny, for those of you who don't know. After all, you haven't aged a bit in these past six years. If anything, I'd say you're looking younger than ever. <laughs> Lately, my skin's been getting quite smooth and silky. And look, hasn't my chest gotten bigger as well? How'd you like a little feel? You're kidding, right? My breast fondling is strictly limited to bouncy girls. Oh, I was quite bouncy in my youth. Don't be shy, fall deal to your heart's content. <laughs> Give me a break! It's girls I'm looking for, not grannies! The jokes I've cracked about Jessica were being turned against me. Come to think of it, Kumasawa has always been the type to tease people. Eh, that's what he gets. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Kumasawa says, stop that now. People with one foot in the coffin and jump around. To sport with the young is the most rejuvenating medicine. <laughs> it's rare for you to come pick us up, Kumasawa san. I wonder what's gotten into you. Usually your lumbago kicks in whenever someone gives you a job to do. <laughs> oh, Ava sama, you're as harsh as ever. I found myself with some urgent purchases to make, and while I was at it, I thought I would come welcome you all. Although it does give a bad impression if the one waiting to greet you was a decrepit old woman. <laughs> Aunt Ava spoke sarcastically, but Kumasawa Bachan's years of experience were nothing to sneeze at. She was more than capable of smoothly and coolly deflecting that comment. Oh, it feels bad to say it, but old... Oh, back up. What'd she say? Yeah, yeah, okay. Go away. Thank you. Well, f okay, yeah. Well, it feels bad to say it, but old Kumasawa Bachan may be past your prime as a servant. She might act as though she's in good health, but between the headaches and her lumbago, her body is wearing out. To tell the truth, the very fact that she's still working is impressive. How old is she this year again? She must be pushing 80 at least. It's incredible that she's still able to act so cheerily. You seem to get... You just seem to get more and more lively. Oh, that's right. Here you are. That's the tea I told you about before. Look, I bought you some. Please do try it later on. Aunt Rosa took a souvenir bag from her, out from her suitcase. To think that she remembered a promise that she'd apparently made last year and faithfully bought it. This sort of thoughtfulness was just like Aunt Rosa. She wasn't the kind of person who would forget or break a promise. Kubasawa Bachan seemed deeply touched, not only that Aunt Rosa had remembered this year-old promise, but that she would bring a gift to a simple servant like her. Uh, this woman is Kumasawa Chido-san. She's a senior servant who's been working at the Ushiromiya head family household for many years. As you'd expect from someone her age, manual labor isn't her strong point, but she's a kind of super servant who can handle just about anything else, from kitchen work to cleaning and laundry. Seems like her only flaw is a tendency to slack off. I hear she tries to get away from heavy or troublesome work by playing up her chronic diseases. In Kumasawa Bachan's case, this was probably a sign of craftiness rather than laziness. Though it probably doesn't impress those paying her salary. <laughs> oh well, even if she's pretty flaky when it comes to work, I could never dislike her. I guess it's probably because of her cheerfulness and her constant smile. Hey, glad to see you're still in fine spirits. How's your back doing then? Even with the medicine, it's not getting one whit better. According to the doctor, nothing can be done for this one. That's what you might call an incurable disease. <laughs> anyway, Jessica Chen keeps, just keeps getting prettier. Good thing she takes after Natsuki, nice son. Really? Personally, I don't think we look alike at all. I mean, I don't even want to be like my parents. Because I got zero respect for him. Now, you shouldn't say such things. <laughs> there are quite few people who don't want to be like their parents in our family. Ah, that's me! You sure as hell better not take after me. Your nose looking like mine already pisses me off. What are you talking about? You're surprisingly alike, you and father. Come on, you can't be serious. Just how am I like dad? <clears throat> You're a lot like him, especially in how arrogant and prideful you are. Father's blood is especially strong in you and Nissan, wouldn't you say, Rosa? 
Oh, absolutely. Krauss Nissan and Rudolf Nissan are almost unbelievably like Dad. All right, all right already. Why am I the only one under fire from the girls? Hideyoshi Nissan, give me a hand, please. <laughs> my, my, Rudolf Kuhn, you always follow so... I can use words. You're always so popular with the ladies. I'm jealous. <laughs> As usual, you're popular enough to make me jealous. Well then, everyone, shall we head over to the boat? Come now, Maria-san, let's get on the boat together, okay? Get on the boat together! Ooh! Everyone gets on together! Ooh! Hell yeah, this time around I'm not gonna be scared. I'm used to be sh being shaken by the waves. That piece of junk fishing boat, I'm less afraid of the shaking than the engine breaking down and the boat drifting off. Oh, yes, Battle Lacoon, I forgot to tell you. That fishing boat was completely worn out, so it was taken out of commission a few years back. Now we get taken to the island in a different boat. Oh, right. It's Battler's first time in the new boat. It's super comfy. And friggin' fast. You can go at crazy high speeds. Oh, that means less travel time, right? That sounds great. Having to worry about sinking is less scary than being on a plane, but it'd still be awesome to get over with as quick as possible. Oh, and thank you for following Absor. Appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Who is Battler gonna fall, fall again? That's only on airplanes. Everything's fine now. Anyway, it's the captain's pride and joy. Kind of a modded high-speed boat. Seems it's got it pretty souped up. He's bragging about how he attached four base high-efficiency pro propellers to make it break 40 knots or something like that. He talks about it all the time, so I've sort of memorized the spiel. Yeah, I've got it memorized too, since we hear about it every year. The captain says he's obsessed with he's been obsessed with botting ever since he lost a speed contest with a foreign boat ages ago. According to him, that opponent managed to break 30 knots with just a fishing boat. And his thirst for a revenge match got him to build an awesome all-new super high-speed modded boat. I'm sure he'll just love it, battler. It's just super. High speed mudded boat. I first thought that this would be much better than some beat up boat that might sink in any moment, but for some reason, I got this feeling of foreboding. Probably just overthinking it. Probably. Hopefully. Maybe. Nope! Not overthinking it! <laughs> hey, battler, maybe you should just swim to the island. Battler Kun, you shouldn't lean over the railing too much. You might fall. Ooh, ooh, fall, fall. Damn it, so this is why you were all grinning back there. So this is the high, super high speed boat that this captain started modding. Oh yes, that piece of junk fishing boat from six years doesn't hold a candle to this guy. <sighs> oh, 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 it's shaking, it's shaking, it's shaking. I'm gonna fall, fall, fall. Oh, oh. oh. That's Maria. Ooh, 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 out of fall, fall, fall. If I fall, I land in the ocean and drown. Where's the parachute? I beat the buoy. <laughs> Give me a life jacket. <laughs> Balder, what the heck are you doing that for? <laughs> ah, yes, the plot points are good. Jessica Chan, Maria Chan, it's not nice to tease. That of the coon, if you're scared, then just don't come out on the deck. I think you'll be able to calm down a bit if you go inside the boat. <laughs> That's a no thank you, Anarchy. Shipwreck victims are always inside the boat. The survivors are usually those on deck during the accident. So I'm staying right here. But it's shaking. I'm gonna fall. Oh. Shake, gonna fall. Ooh, ooh. Maria, I told you to behave yourself. But Battler Kun, it looks like you really can't handle it. I'll go tell the captain to slow down for you. Oh, Aunt Rosa, thank you. I can tell you that now. I can tell you now that safe, slow driving is definitely the way to go, even on the sea! <laughs> Don't do that, Rosa. Trials and tribulations are important for young men. Isn't that right, Battler Kun? You'd better be able to overcome a little scare like this. Otherwise, you'll never be able to go to Egypt with your aunt. 
<laughs> oh, Eddie, but you're so mean. Oh, no, I've got to fall. Oh, oh. Life jacket parachute. <laughs> Wait, got to spin it around. I think that way. What's the enemy aiming for? Is he doing this to scare me? If that's what he's aiming for. Too bad. Like hell, I'll be scared. <laughs> I'm going to fall. <laughs> So after I made a huge fool of myself for a while, Ed Rosa had a talk with the boat captain and he slowed down to a more manageable speed for me. <sighs> That's a bit better. Thought I was going to die earlier. Apparently the max speed I can tolerate is extremely slow. That just now is completely insane. The whole boat was shaking. Sliding and leaping on the ocean surface. I felt like I was riding on the back of a flying fish. Jessica was still guffawing at me as I leaned against the railing, tired and disheartened. I lost that strength contest earlier. I'm glad to know I'm no worse off where it really counts. But seriously. <laughs> Damn it, go ahead and laugh. One of these days I'm going to find your weakness and get back at you. And then your boobs will be mine to squish. <laughs> yeah, sure, good luck with that. <laughs> Ooh, battler all week. Yeah, battler all week. I want to die on land, not in the ocean or the sky. Maria was patting my back, so I patted her head in return. Her expression was blank as usual, but I realized that she wanted to console me. Battle kun the captain's throwing in drinks to make up for this. Would you like one? Let's calm yourself down. George Anaki and Kumasawa Bachan brought us all ice-cold cans of soft drinks covered with beads of water. Judging from Kumasawa-san's big grin, oh, bother. Uh, our parents inside the boat were all, were probably all rolling around, rolling around laughing at my moment of pure terror. <sighs> Damn it, I'm so embarrassed I can't bear to face any of them. I didn't change the subject somehow. I had the feeling I'd be the butt of everyone's jokes for the whole trip. So I tried to think of something harmless to talk about. Uh, hey, Jessica. How are Uncle Kraus and Aunt Natsuhi doing? My old man and mom? Uh, unfortunately, they're fine. Though every other word out of their mouths is study, study, which pisses me off. I'm so jealous since it doesn't look like Uncle Hideyoshi or Uncle Rudolph would say stuff like that. <laughs> oh no. Before I had my exams, my parents kept pressing me about it over and over. I thought it was annoying then, but now I'm grateful. Ha! <laughs> I knew it! You really are awesome, Anaki. Anyway, I have to look after myself. No one tells me what to do. Well, it's not like I'd listen if they did. <laughs> Battler san, have you still not returned to your parents' home? Well, I, I kind of go back now and then. Got lots of clothes and stuff left at the house I was living in until recently. Ooh, Battler has two houses? Uh, hmm. Something like that. Why? Why do you have two houses? Ooh? Ooh? Only Maria, who couldn't really grasp the situation, voiced this naive question. However, the others just shot nervous glances at me, choosing not to respond even though they knew the answer. Maria, look, you can see the harbor now. Look, over there. Can you see it? Ooh. Saw the harbor. Saw the harbor. Apparently, Jessica was trying to be nice by changing the subject. Ah, well... I'd rather not talk about it if I can help it, but it's uncomfortable we have it treated like some kind of weird taboo. I don't mind it that much myself anymore. I may be a member of the Ushi Romeo family, but the truth is, for these last six years, I've been living with my grandmother, parents on my late mother's side, and I've even been using her family name. When those grandparents passed away one after the other, I basically had no choice but to go back and live with the old bastard. Don't get me wrong, I didn't just run away from home or anything like that. The only one at fault here is my dad. I don't really blame Kyrie-san. 
Being able to hold off that old bastard's reins and ride him out is no mean feat. Still, the way that old bastard betrayed my mom... Well, unfortunately, I still haven't fully gotten over that. <clears throat> we'll be getting there soon. George Aniki cleared his throat, trying to change the subject. Please forgive my indiscretion. It seems this old woman has said too much already. If I've hurt your feelings... <laughs> I don't mind it. No one's feelings are hurt. Don't worry, Kumasawa Bachan. Kumasawa san seemed to regret speaking out of turn. I was more concerned with about being worried over some about being worried over for something like that, so I stood up and passed it off lightly. After that I had a sip of my drink and headed over to Maria and Jessica who were gazing at the silhouette of the island. Ooh Battler, I saw the island! Saw the island! There, there, there! Ooh! ooh. Where is it? Oh, I see it now. Even after six years, the island hasn't changed a bit. The small island silhouette in front of us had gotten pretty close. The name's island is Rokinjima. It's a small island about 10 kilometers around, located in the Izu Archipelago. Since they call this archipelago the Izu Seven, lots of people think there are only seven islands, but that's not true. There's actually several more, and Rokinjima is one of the minor islands that don't get counted. Even if that weren't the case, I doubt you'd find many people who knew about this island. Only people connected to the Ushiromiya family ever go there. In other words, outsiders and tourists never have any reason to care about it. So you'll never find this island's name in a travel brochure. Because it doesn't exist. After all, all of Rokinjima is an estate possessed by the Ushiromiya head family. Only the Ushiromiya family lives there, and only people connected to the Ushiromiya family come and go to and from there. There's nothing except there's nothing there except a harbor and a mansion. The vast majority of the island is still just uncultivated forest. It's such a waste when it could be made into a nice golf course or something. There's a thought for you. Rokinjima is a golf course. However, when you realize that the entire coastline is a private beach, it starts to sound pretty magnificent. You've probably guessed by now, but it, to put it simply, well, the Ushiromiya family is just rolling in dough. The head family apparently possesses a vast fortune. And Dad and the others who make up the branch families have built up plenty of wealth for themselves, finding success in their respective businesses. I've been living a commoner's life in my grandparents' home these six years, so I'd completely forgotten. The old bastard's house really is elegant, and everything about it is tuned to match the snobbish taste of the annoyingly rich. Come to think of it, I guess that makes George, Anaki, Jessica, Maria, and me wealthy, high-class gentlemen and ladies. Needless to say, none of us think of ourselves that way at all. I don't see myself as being rich, and George Anaki, who takes self-discipline very seriously, doesn't let himself get too comfortable. Jessica's always complaining that she'd rather move to the city than be rich. And Maria's still a kid who isn't even interested in money at all. Does that attitude really make us any less snobbish? From the perspective of people in poverty who can't pay the bills, we really have been blessed with a lot. Now, this isn't the place to explain any further, so I won't. Anyway, it's the same as not being able to choose the parents you're born from. I didn't ask to be born into a rich family, and I don't think it's really something to be envied. It'll be pretty trying when people are prejudiced against you because just because you're rich and refuse to judge you by your merits. As I pondered these sentimental thoughts, Maria sh started shouting and leaned over the railing. Who? Gone. What's wrong, Maria? Did you drop something? Who? Who? Gone. Gone. Who? 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 Maria kept yelling, "Gone! Gone!" At first, it sounded as though she dropped something, but while she shouted, she also pointed out over the ocean. What's wrong? What's gone? I'll look for it too if you want. What is it? If she dropped something, she would have probably looked down at the floor, but Maria was pointing out over the ocean. One would assume by that gesture that she'd spotted something, but she kept saying that something wasn't there. Strange. However, since my last memories of this place came from six years ago, I was able to spot it before Anaki, who comes here every year. Huh? If I remember correctly, wasn't there a tori or something on the top of a small crag around here? Uh, let's see, a tori. Where is that? 
It is a ceremonial, ceremonial entry gate to a Shinto shrine. It's usually red and has a very recognizable and prominent square shape, like so, uh, consisting of two vertical or slightly inward tilted pillars joined by two extended horizontal bars, one crowning the pillars and the other just below. Sometimes many tori are used in series along a path, which if you've ever played Ghost of Tsushima, there's a lot of these there, so. Great game, by the way. That's right, it was definitely there. I remember it well, as we get closer to the island, it's the first thing to greet us, like a landmark. Wow, you're amazing, battler. Even though it's been six years, you remembered. Uh, it was here, wasn't it? I remember it too. The Tutelary God Shrine and the Tori like thing were standing all alone in that crag. And now that you mention it, they are gone, aren't they? I'm pretty sure they were still there last year. Gone! Gone! Ooh! Maybe they were washed away by the waves or something. It was a small crag, so it probably got worn away over time. Well, that's my theory too. It was last summer that it disappeared. But they say... They say an enormous lightning bolt came crashing down one evening and smashed the shrine. The fishermen whisper that having a thunderbolt fall upon our honored tutelary god must be a portent of um, approaching misfortune. Kuabara, kuabara. Lightning be gone. Rough translation. Kumasawa-san smiled impishly as if teasing us, rubbing her hands together while intoning a Japanese phrase meant to ward off lightning. However, Maria put, apparently took this seriously, stared fixedly over the ocean as to where the crag housing the Shrine God was supposed to be. <clears throat> A portent of misfortune. Ooh. Enough, Kumasawa-san. Maria isn't old enough to get that kind of joke. It's okay, Maria-chan. It's just a coincidence. Nothing scary is gonna happen. George Aniki put a hand on Maria's shoulder to calm her down, but Maria's sharp-eyed expression didn't waver. Misfortune. Misfortune. Maria muttered that word over and over. Apparently, repeating a single word over and over is a habit that Maria's had for a long time. However, since the word she was saying was literally an ill omen, it was a bit creepy. <clears throat> hey now, Maria. If you say it over and over like that, misfortune really will end up happening, you know? <clears throat> I tapped Maria's other shoulder. Maria whipped her head around, stared in my face, and smoked unblinkingly. Ooh, misfortune is coming. Huh? And just where is it coming from? I answered lightheartedly, trying to break the tension in the air. At that moment, Maria held up a finger, raised her arm high, and pointed to the up to the heavens. When I looked up, I saw that the sky was still just as cloudy, but it had grown a great deal more leaden than it had been this morning. That's right, they were saying that a typhoon was approaching. We had planned to spend one night on the island, but if this storm doesn't pass quickly, I won't be able to make it to school on Monday. Well, I guess it makes a pretty good excuse to be absent. Ooh. She apparently sent some kind of misfortune in this cloudy sky. She's been muttering that non-stop for a while now. Girls of Maria's age tend to be very impressionable. She's just about the age that many girls start to get excited about six senses and whether they have any psychic potential and stuff. For all we know, this might be due to her childish, sensitive nature. It's okay, Maria-chan. The weather might get worse tonight, but tomorrow it'll clear up and become a pretty blue sky. Ooh. Pretty blue sky. Ooh. That's right, by tomorrow it'll be a pretty blue sky. There's no rain that doesn't end and no clouds that never clear. Ooh. Rain that doesn't end. Clouds that never clear. Ooh. She got the completely wrong misinterpretation out of that. I know the typhoon's coming, but sooner it'll go away. It'll be okay, Maria. Maria started yelling, ooh, ooh. Looks as though she was having a tantrum because no one could understand what she was trying to say. 
How in the world is Maria trying so desperately to warn us about? Unable to understand her, we couldn't help but feel a vague sense of misfortune. I've heard that everyone can feel the supernatural, that, but that it weakens as you age. It might mean that Maria, the youngest one of us all, had still possessed some kind of sense that the rest of us had lost. I wonder if that sense is sending her a warning. At that moment, Kumasawa-san quietly opened her mouth. Rumor has it that long ago, Rokunjima was... Kumasawa-san, let's not talk about that now. Just as Kumasawa-san was about to tell some kind of story, Jessica sharply interrupted her. Jessica's tone was extremely firm for her. Which is saying something. I wanted to push her further, just out of simple curiosity. But judging by the look on Jessica's face, whatever Kumasawa Bacha was likely to say would probably make Maria even more uneasy. If I did try to press her for the story, the odds were pretty good that it wouldn't be anything bright and cheery. <laughs> I do apologize about that. The wind here is hard to bear for the elderly, so if you would excuse me for now. Gospers have no reason to hang around after they've been told to stop chatting. When Kumasawa-san finally realized that she'd overstepped her bounds, she went back inside the boat. After she left, Uncle Hideyoshi showed up at her place. Since he'd arrived mid-conversation, he completely failed to notice the complicated atmosphere that hung about the scene. So he, refreshing, he refreshingly and unwittingly swept that atmosphere aside. So in the end, it was his lack of tact that brightened the mood. <laughs> Looks like we're almost there! Okay, just a bit more! It took forever the speed we went today, didn't it? Wonder whose fault that was! Oh, Uncle Hideyoshi, give me a break already. <laughs> uh, come on, don't stop there. Seriously, things a battle here. It's taken forever. Ooh. Maria probably thought that everyone was refusing to listen to her. She hung her head, wearing a fretful expression. As she did, George Anaki crouched down to meet her eyes and spoke to her kindly. Couldn't they have, like, dropped his sprite a bit to... Anyway. Maria-chan, there's nothing to be afraid of. Because we're all together. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're together. Go ahead and say it. Ooh. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're together. Yes. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're with each other. Ooh. <clears throat> That's right. Exactly what George Aniki said. If we stick together, there'll never be anything to, at all to be afraid of. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, Jessica? Yeah, no doubt about that. What George Nissan says is always true, Maria. Ooh, George Onichan, always true? Yes, I don't lie. So trust me, there's nothing to be afraid of if we're all together. Ooh, George Unichan doesn't lie. I trust you. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're all together. Ooh, not afraid. Maria jumped into George Aniki's arms and hugged him tightly. After Aniki patted her head, she jumped away again. Her facial expression had gone, undergone a 180 degree change, turning back to normal. She was once again the ordinary Maria. Ooh. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore, because we're together. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that's it. You look all better now. You're strong, and that's awesome. Ooh. I'm awesome. Yeah, that's what I thought. The um, new translation is... Sweet. Well, hold on. Let me look. Tips. Referring to yourself. In Japanese, Maria uses her own name instead of the word I when talking about herself. This is called Ili Iliism and is common among young Japanese children. It sounds childish and cute in Japanese and can be used by young adult women to achieve the same effect. Even the other characters have various ways of referring to themselves because Japanese has more than one word for I. Kinzo, Nanjo, Eva, Jessica, and a number of other characters use Watashi, which is a neutral way of saying I. Battler uses Ore, which is a masculine, self-asserting, and very casual way of ser uh, saying it. George uses Boku, which has a youthful, boyish, casual, and humble feel. 
I never noticed that before. <clears throat> Hideyoshi uses Washi, which goes along with his strange accent and makes him sound older. There are many others. However, you will not always hear these words being used, just as you will not always hear Maria using her own name, because Japanese is a pro-drop language. Words like I, you, it, and so on are awfully simply left out when it's obvious who or what is being talked about. <coughs> so, the, I guess this phrase would actually be, Ooh, Maria is awesome! <coughs> <coughs> Uh, apologies. Uh, let me hydrate a bit more. Ah, there we go. Hey, now, what's going on here? Maria Chad didn't get seasick, did she? Hmm? <laughs> well, something like that. We'll be arriving soon. The harbor was already drawing near. Ah, chapter break. Gotcha. Okay, and this is actually a good time to go ahead and uh, wrap things up for today, because I am in a bit of a time crunch and I don't know when the next chapter break is. So we will go ahead and leave it here for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining uh, me. I'm not entirely sure when the next stream of this particular uh, game is going to be because I wanted to try and wrap up. <clears throat> I wanted to try and wrap up for Ace Attorney before digging into this one too much. <clears throat> but I absolutely had to start it today because October 4th being so important in this game. But yeah. I thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm going to real quick see if there is anyone whom I can raid. But, uh, let's see. We've got... Okay. We'll go ahead and start this raid here. But yeah, I will be back uh, on Wednesday night. Haven't decided what I'll be streaming yet then. But look forward to that. <clears throat> in the meantime, this is Dr. Novell signing out. The raid will begin in about six seconds. And raiding 